I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Kath Craft and welcome to my latest episode of my midweek sewing chat. I always really enjoy filming these midweek sewing chat videos where I pop on and share a little bit about what I've been up to on the sewing front and sometimes on the knitting front too and a little bit about what I'm wearing for my handmade wardrobe and just generally what I'm up to and what I'm planning too. So today it's Tuesday morning, it's just coming up to quarter past 10 in the morning. I like to film these videos on a Tuesday morning and then edit them on Tuesday evening and then try and put them up on YouTube on a Wednesday. That's usually my plan. And it's quite a nice day today actually. We had a really, really cold weekend. There was frost um, on the grass in the mornings. I think it went to minus numbers overnight. It's definitely quite cold. And then yesterday it was a very rainy day. So yeah, it was kind of a day for being inside and getting a load of jobs done. This morning it's much nicer, it's overcast, but it's mild. So I've been out for a run and I'm sitting down to film this and I'm hoping today to carve out a little bit of sewing time, which will be really nice. And I'd like to try and fit in a bit of sewing this week because next week my children are on holiday for the Easter holidays for two weeks. So I'll have a little bit less time to sew. So I definitely wanna get my fill this week where I can. And I've got one particular garment that I'm hoping to finish today that I'll share with you in a little bit. But I'll start the video off firstly with what I'm wearing today. And I'm wearing a handmade top and a handmade skirt. And this top is one I haven't worn for a while actually. And I was just thinking about it and thought I need to dig that out of my wardrobe. And it's a very hacked version of this pattern here, which is the Seamwork Astoria top or Astoria sweater. It is a knit, um, a top design for knit fabrics. And it's one I'd admired on Instagram quite a lot. So I was quite keen to make it for a while. And then I put it, I think, on my Make Nine plans for 2021. So I thought I'd definitely give it a go then. I made a toile of it in some jersey scraps and I didn't like it on me very much, particularly the fit. It just didn't come out quite right. So I went on to make this version with quite a few changes. So I'm not sure if you'd recognise it as the original Astoria top anymore. The original Astoria top's got a kind of cropped finish with this bottom band. Um, and then it's got, you can either make a three quarter length or a full length sleeve. And it's got this, this neckline, which looks on the pattern quite scooped down. When I made my first version, I found it came up quite high. And for the version I'm wearing now, I actually ended up scooping the neckline out a little bit more because it came up so high and I don't find that very comfy to wear. This is my version that I'm really pleased with actually, but it is really altered. As well as the neckline, I also found the arms on the Astoria top came up really tight on me, which is not something I usually find. So I um, yeah, widened the arms quite a lot and I've gone for the full length version. So it's more of a jumper. I've got a t-shirt underneath rather than a sort of top on its own. And then I changed the bottom quite a lot. I, instead of having a cropped sort of short finish, I widened it slightly and took it down further. So it hasn't got a bottom band anymore on. It's just kind of like a sort of straight jersey top that I sort of tuck into things. So I've got it tucked into my skirt, as you can see. But it's really comfy and I like the navy colour and I love the fabric. Um, this fabric, I'll hold it up close so you can see, is a Mind the Maker cotton jersey jacquard fabric. So it's got a lovely sort of jacquard texture to it and these sort of leaf shapes. It's really pretty. It comes in a whole range of different colours, but I went for the navy because I thought it would go with lots of things. It was really nice to sew with. It's really stable for a jersey fabric. Um, didn't stretch too much, but it has got enough stretch to wear, but it's quite kind of a, yeah, it's quite different to a cotton jersey. I think it's a bit more substantial, so it's quite nice and cosy. So yeah, that's why I'm wearing on top. And I thought I'd mention the sizing on the Astoria top. It's got really good sizing. It goes from an extra small up to a 3X and that takes you up to a bust of 54 inches. But yeah, it's one that just didn't work for me as it was, but I'm glad I hacked it. And I definitely think I'd make another hack of it um, with the changes I've made because it's a really nice comfy top and perfect for layering, but not too thick and cosy. It's so nice for this slightly milder weather. And then on the bottom, I've got one of my favourite skirt patterns for winter, which is this pattern here. It is the Camden Pinafore and Skirt Pattern by Nina Lee London. It's a really nice pattern. This is the skirt here with this sort of waistband that's fitted to your natural waist. And then it comes out in a sort of A-line shape into a kind of mini skirt length, I guess, with these cool feature patch pockets with this angular point here. And then there's an invisible zip on the back to get you in and out of it. And it's fully lined, both the pinafore and the skirt are lined. So that's quite a nice option, I think. It's the fabric I've gone for, which I'll show you in a moment, I think is the sort of fabric that would um, need lining. because otherwise it would sort of ride up against my tights that I'm wearing. And the pinafore is really nice too. It's got these princess seams and quite a fitted bodice. I would like to give the pinafore a go at some point actually, because I've seen some really lovely versions, but I think it's one I would want to twirl to make sure I got the fit right and that the length of the bodice and how it sort of fits me with the princess seam. So 
it's one to maybe give a go maybe next winter if I want a kind of meteor project and something to have a little play around with the shapes of but it's a really nice pattern in terms of sizing it hasn't got the biggest size range some of Nina Lee's pattern comes comes in two size bands but this one only comes in her size UK 6 to UK 20 size band so the largest size on the skirt is for waist of 38 inches and I think I pretty much went with my measurements on this one because I find Nina Lee patterns to be quite true to size so I made my version in a really pretty um, corduroy fabric it's quite a sort of fine corduroy fabric it's a Robert Kaufman corduroy and I got it from Guthrie Garney I got it quite a while ago and I don't think they've got any Robert Kaufman corduroys in stock anymore but I'll check and link them if they do have some but they're really nice quality corduroys although it's quite a fine sort of whale or however you say that um word um it is still quite substantial so it's perfect for a skirt nice and cozy and holds this sort of a-line shape well I'll stand up to show you the colour it's a really pretty sort of really rich rust colour that I think goes quite well with the navy um and yeah, I really enjoy wearing this one. I've lined it with um, a cute pro lining. I'll stand up to show you a little bit of that. It's hard to see. Um, here it is. It was my first time sewing with cute pro. I think it's cute pro Benberg lining. I thought I'd give it a try because I saw it online and people were saying it's a really nice fabric to use and nice and breathable. It was really slippery to work with. I did find it quite tricky to cut out because um, it just shifted all over the place. I ended up using my rotary cutter and lots of weights and yeah, just doing my best. Um, but once I came to sewing it, it was a bit easier at that stage with my walking foot and everything. And it's really lovely and slippery, so perfect for lining. It's a really nice, comfy, cosy one. I think because the skirt comes up right to your waist, it really keeps you nice and warm. Oh, and I'll put a picture up of the full outfit so you can see how that looks on. Oh, and before I move on to what I've been up to on the sewing front, I thought I'd mention, um, I'm filming in here today at my dining table come sewing table instead of in the front room where I often film my videos because my neighbours across the road are having their carpets cleaned today. So they've got a van outside their house and it's making a really loud sort of humming noise with a carpet cleaning. And I can hear it at the moment in here, but I'm hoping it won't through, come through the camera so that you can hear, hopefully you can't hear it. But apologies if you can hear a bit of a humming in the background. It is a carpet cleaning van across the road, so sorry about that. So anyway, let me move on to now what I've been up to on the sewing front and I have managed to get a bit of sewing done over the last few days, which has been really nice. And the first item I've been sewing is a top using this pattern here, which is the cuff top by the assembly line. It's a really nice pattern actually. It's one I discovered fairly recently, I think maybe last year. Um, I really love the look of it and I've really enjoyed sewing it and I've got two or two versions. I've just made my third version. I really enjoy wearing them too. It's quite a straight fit top with this boat neck and the feature I really like is these oversized elasticated cuffs. I think it's such a nice feature and just makes a kind of woven t-shirt a little bit different and it comes together really quickly actually this pattern so it's quite a nice satisfying sew too. So if you saw um, I think it would be my spring sewing plans video that I posted a couple of weeks ago. I'll link it up above in case you haven't seen it. I was talking all about some new fabrics and plans I had then you'll know what fabric I chose for this um, cuff top. It's some fabric that was actually gifted to me by Minerva as part of their Minerva brand ambassador program which I'm part of so every now and then they will gift me a fabric and then I'll sew it up into a garment of my choice and write a review and a blog post talking all about how I found the fabric and also how I found the pattern on their website. So I still need to do that blog post and I need to get some photos of this garment but I have finished it now as I mentioned, this top comes together quite quickly. So yeah, you can really sew it up in a couple of hours. It's quite a nice speedy one. So I just got my top here to show you. And here it is, I'll just give you a little sneak peek of it. I'm really pleased how it turned out actually. Um, this pattern is designed for woven fabrics, but I think it's more designed for lightweight woven fabrics. So I wasn't sure how it'll work with it. Well, it's not a really heavyweight fabric. It is a lightweight sort of needle core, but definitely heavier than the cotton lawns I've used before. It actually came together really nicely and I'm really pleased how it's turned out. I decided to, the pattern has this um, line down the front and back, so you cut the front in two pieces and the back in two pieces and then you sort of sew it down the front and I wasn't sure whether to just cut the corduroy fabric on the fold um, or to do that line but I decided to add the line in because I thought it's a nice little feature of the top so I've got that but it's quite subtle with the corduroy but you can just about see it there. And I'm pleased to add it in because I think it does add a nice detail. I think the cuffs look really cute in the corduroy and it feels really nice obviously so I'm happy with it and I really like um, red as a colour. I think it'll go really nice with maybe a dark pair of jeans. So hopefully I'll get some photos of this one I'll be able to share that um, firstly on the Minerva website which, and I'll, once that blog post available 
I'll link it down below. And then I'll be showing more about this as well in my next makes video, so my April makes. But yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I do always make a few adjustments to this pattern, particularly around the neckline. I might bring it in slightly just so that it's quite a wide neckline. And I think if I didn't bring it in, then you might see my bra straps peeking a little bit at the side. So I bring it a little bit. And again, like with this Astoria top, I've also dipped the neckline slightly because I found it, it came, came up quite high otherwise. And I'm not a big fan of things that come up too high. So it's still kind of a boat neckline shape, just slightly more lower than it would be otherwise. But yeah, I'm really pleased that it was a nice little satisfying sew. Oh, and I forgot to say, just generally in the video, whenever I talk about a fabric or a pattern, I'll try and link it down below, like the baby cord that I used for my assembly line top and also this lovely jacquard fabric. Yeah, if it's still available, I'll try and link it in the description down below always. But that was my first thing I've been sewing this week. And then the second thing I've been sewing, which you'll know I started last week, if you watch my episode nine of my midweek sewing chat, is a dress from this book here, the Breaking the Pattern book. And I was saying how I've had this book for a couple of years now and haven't made anything from it. So I thought 2022 is the year when I'm going to try some of these patterns. And the first one I wanted to try was the Saras shirt dress. So I'll show it to you just so you can see how it looks. Um, where is it? Here it is. It's a really lovely shirt dress with some interesting details. Um, it's got a gathered waist, but actually not all the way around. The front has these two sort of panels that come all the way down the dress. It's got a back yoke, which I always think is quite a pretty detail on a shirt or a shirt dress. And it's got this collar with a little ruffle at the front, which I think is really cute. So I was really keen to give it a go. And also I'd only made one pattern by named clothing before, um, a jersey dress, the Kylo wrap dress. So I was quite keen to try another one of their patterns and see how the instructions were and how it was saying one of their woven patterns because the Saras shirt dress is designed for lightweight woven fabrics. So yeah, I've been sewing that up and I've nearly finished actually. And you can see probably a little sneak peek of the dress. It's just hanging up on the mirror there. So I will grab it and show you a bit more detail. So here is my Saras shirt dress and I've made good progress on it this week and I'm really happy with how it's shaping up. So I've got the collar on here and you can see it's got this cute little ruffle at the front on both sides, which came together really nicely. And the collar went in really nicely actually. It's got this lovely, um, um, I love the yoke where you have this, can see the fabric on the inside as well as the outside. And that's kind of done using this sort of burrito technique and it came together really nicely too. And I decided to add a little ruffle on the sleeve edge as well. So you can see instead of the normal hem, I've added a ruffle to both sleeves. I thought it'd just be an extra little, pretty little detail on this dress. See, so yeah, I've got the skirt on too. It's quite hard to show. It's quite a long one, actually. I think it's designed to be midi length. So pretty much the only things I've got left to do on this dress now are to add the buttons. I need to do the buttonholes and sew the buttons on. And then I also need to do the hem, but I need to decide on the length first. So I made um, for this the size one on the bust and then I graded out to size two on the waist and hips just based on my measurements. And I've tried it on um, and kind of held it as the buttons were going. I'm pretty happy with the fit actually. It fits nicely. It's not too snug, um, but not too loose either, which I think is always good. Um, See, so yeah, I'm really happy with how it came together. Um, in terms of the instructions, I was interested to see how they would be from the book and I found them really good and clear. The only thing is they do jump around a little bit and refer to other patterns and other pattern instructions in the book. For example, it says for point seven, following step 10 of the shirt pattern, see page 124 to 125, so the yoke pieces. So you do have to sort of refer to other bits in the book. So they're not all the instructions for the Saras shirt dress are included in the Saras shirt dress area which is fine, it just involves a bit of leafing through the book. But once you find the right bits, the instructions are clear there too, if that makes sense. So I'm really looking forward to finishing this one. And I'm hoping to do that today. And um, we've got some buttons now, which is good. And then I need to decide on the length. Um, you, if you've seen my videos before, you'll know that I'm often not a fan of a midi length and I often go for a sort of above the knee length. That's usually my preference. But actually, when I tried this one on, I quite liked how it looked with a longer length. So I think I might go for that for now and see how I get on with it. I thought it was just a bit different and I know it's how the dress intended. So, um, yeah, I thought I might give that a try and see how I, how I go with that. That is my plan for the moment. But once I've got the buttons on, at least the top few, I can maybe have a think then and see how it looks once it's all finished. But I'll show you the buttons. So in terms of the buttons for my Ceresta shirt dress, if you saw my last week's midweek sewing chat, my episode nine, I'll link it up above um, in case you're fans checking out if you haven't seen it. You know, I didn't have any buttons at that point. I hadn't really thought about them and I suddenly got to the point of starting to sew and thought, I need to get some buttons because I want to be able to finish this one and enjoy it. 
So what I decided to do last week is go on a little trip to a shop that's fairly local to me that I hadn't been to for a long time, not since before the lockdowns and before COVID came about. Um, I decided to go back there because they have a really lovely haberdashery section in their shop. It's a shop in a big town near me and um, town is called Reading. And um, they have, they, the shop is, um, they sell overlockers and um, other sewing machines. And they used to have a stall at a local market where they sold lots of haberdashery things, but that market got closed down because the town was regenerated. So they sort of moved a selection of the haberdashery into their shop. So I was talking to the gentleman there and I was saying, oh, I love your selection of buttons. And he was saying, oh, we used to have even more when we were at the market. And I couldn't believe that because there were so many buttons there. I was really spoilt for choice. I'll put a picture up actually of um, a couple of the areas of their buttons. There's so many in all different colours. So I had so much fun. I was there a while admiring all the buttons and sort of um, holding them up against my fabric, which is really nice to do actually, because since COVID and the lockdown, I've bought most of my boss buttons online. And sometimes it's quite easy to find a match if you're just looking for a plain black or a white. But when you have other colours that you want to sort of think about, it's really nice to be able to go and try them against the fabric, I think. So yeah, I enjoyed that. I'll link the um, shop down below their website in case you fancy having a little bit nosy online on their website. But I bought my overlocker there too, actually, which is quite nice to know if I ever have any issues with my overlocker, I can quite easily take it back because it's only about a 15 or 20 minute drive for me. So anyway, I got some buttons. I got a few different buttons, including for my Saras shirt dress. And I'll show you those first. I wasn't sure whether to pick out the sort of... Um, the sort of deep red colour or the teal. Um, but in the end, I decided to go for a navy button to pick up the sort of darker navy spots on here because I do like a navy. I thought that would work quite well. So the buttons I got are these ones here. Yeah, They're quite cute little sort of buttons with a slight sort of curve to them, which is hard to see. And yeah, no, they're quite sort of subtle because I didn't want them to be too much because the fabric's quite busy already. But I think they'll look quite nice on this fabric if I hold one up, you can see. Ooh. It's really hard to sort of hold a button up actually. Um, so yeah, I think that'll look quite nice. And it will sort of show the detail of the front, flat front with those buttons. They're quite sort of strong contrast against the back grey. So that is my plan. So I've got, I can't remember how many I got of them. I got enough to be able to put them all the way down the midi dress if I do decide to go to the midi length. So I need to get those um, in my automatic buttonhole um, maker on my machine and start sewing those buttonholes onto this dress, which will be a lot of fun. And while I was there, I also picked up a few other buttons as well, which I thought I'd show you. Um, I got a couple of different button options for another fabric I'm thinking of making into a shirt dress. And this is another fabric I talked about in my um, spring sewing plans video. I'll get it now, here it is. Which is this really lovely cotton fabric that I got from Sew Me Sunshine with this really um, pretty colours in check. So quite a different fabric to my cotton lawn here. Oh, I forgot to mention actually, this fabric is a Dashwood Studio cotton lawn. It's been so nice to sew with. It's a really lovely, lightweight fabric. I think it'll be perfect for summer and I'll link it down below. Um, I got it from Minerva and they have such a nice range of Dashwood cotton lawns. I would definitely buy another Dashwood cotton lawn. It's lovely and light with a bit of drape and yeah, it was really nice to sew with. But yeah, anyway, that, that was my um, stress dress. This fabric came from Sony Sunshine. It's a lovely, slightly more substantial cotton fabric. I don't think it's a cotton lawn. I'm not sure what it is, but it's yarn dyed. So it's got the same um, check on both sides, which I think is really nice. And these pretty colours and as you can see there's quite a few options here for what I could go for um, for a shirt dress so I had quite a lot of fun having a look at different buttons I couldn't find a perfect green match but I found a couple of other buttons I thought would work quite well this fabric the first one I thought would be nice is this sort of bright yellow colour I thought they'd be quite cute for buttons on a shirt dress um, with this check fabric and the other one I got was this sort of red colour it's kind of a fairly soft red that kind of goes quite nicely with the sort of red colours on here so those are two buttons I'm considering to use for this fabric. I thought they both were quite fun matches with this fabric. If you have a preference, then let me know. Um, if you saw my spring plans video, you'll know I was thinking of maybe making some sort of shirt dress, possibly the Maya Sotis dress by Deer and Doe, but I haven't definitely decided yet. Um, this fabric is washed and ready to cut out though, so at some point I will get around to doing that, hopefully in time for summer, we shall see. But yeah, those are two buttons I got there. I also got a few other buttons when I was there. Um, and it's such good value. The buttons are really good value. And I think I've got, I've got loads of them here. I don't know how many I got, but it only came to £5.95. And that included me also buying um, one Gutemann thread as well that I thought was a nice match for sewing with this fabric too. So once I get started on deciding what I'm going to make with this one and sewing it, um, I've got all the notions ready, I think, for this one, which is great. So yeah, it was really nice actually um, to have a little trip out to a shop. And I really enjoyed having a little look around there. Um, and yet I took my time. <laughs> 
So those are the current sewing projects and things I've been up to and that I'm planning. So I'd really like to get my um, Saras shirt dress finished today. And um, that'll be a really nice one as soon as the warm weather arrives, I think. And I'd like to get that done as well as a few other little bits before the Easter holidays kicks off next week. Because I know I won't get much sewing time then. We're going to be quite busy. I've got a few days out booked and we're also going away for a few days as a family, which will be really nice. Um, my husband hasn't had any time off since Christmas, so I think he could do with a bit of a break. So it'll be really nice. So fingers crossed we'll get some good weather for our break. We shall see. But one thing I would like to do um, during the holidays, just a mini sewing project that should be quite easy to pick up and put down, is make a few more pairs of knickers for my daughter. Um, I made some handmade knickers for her earlier this year. You'll have seen, if you watch my earlier mid midweek sewing chat episodes, I've been really enjoying using up jersey scraps to make knickers for most myself and my daughter. And the ones I made for her, I made based on her measurements, but I think as they've got washed a few times, they've got a little bit smaller and they're okay now, but I think she'll be growing out of them fairly soon. So I want to make a bigger size next time. So they'll last a bit longer. Um, so I've got some fabric that I'd like to use and I know I'm going to use the same pattern I used before because it seems to fit her really nicely, which is the mini acacia knickers pattern by Megan Nielsen Patterns. It's a really nice free pattern available for Megan Nielsen. There's also an adult version too, but I haven't tried that because I really like the Tilly in the Buttons. Um, what's the Tilly in the Buttons knickers called? Iris knickers. I've used that for myself and I really like that one. So I think I'll be sticking with that one for me. But the mini acacia work really well for my daughter and they're so small you can you really don't need much jersey fabric at all to make them so i think i'm going to use some of this fabric here and this is a fabric that i was really kindly gifted by first for fabrics and i made a dress for my daughter out of this fabric and she really liked it it's really cute it's got these little unicorns on and it's a little bit christmas because it's got presents on but i don't think you, that really matters on pants and i think there's enough sort of unicorny and kind of rainbows and things to make them work all year round so I'm going to so hopefully cut a bit of that up and I've got this really cute and bright pink fold over elastic to use with this unicorn fabric, which I think will be quite fun for some knickers for my daughter. So hopefully I'll get a few pairs of those sewn up over Easter and she could do with some more pairs anyway, because some of her ready to wear ones are getting a little bit old and tatty too. So it'll be nice to make a few more pairs of those. It's really nice to be able to use what I have from the fabric to make those. So hopefully I'll be able to just cut those out here and there over Easter. But I'm not sure how much sewing I'll get done for me. Um, maybe a couple of evenings, we shall see. So that was all of my sewing updates that I wanted to share with you. So I'm really looking forward to getting that Sarast shirt dress finished. I'm hopefully going to get that done now once I've finished off this video. And then I have a little bit of time to think about whether I keep it at the midi length or go for my usual above the knee length. And I'll let you know what I decide in due course. But yeah, it'd be really lovely to have that one finished ahead of some for warm weather, which hopefully won't be too long before that arrives. Yeah, keeping my fingers tightly crossed on that front. So I'm not sure I'll be on next week for a midweek sewing chat because I haven't got that much sewing planned once the Easter holidays kicks off, so I won't have too much to report. But I will be on this weekend. And um, this weekend, I'm planning to release my March makes video. I've got a few garments I've sewn to share with you that I made in March, and also a couple of knitted items I made in March too. So I'd love it if you would join me for that video, which I'll be releasing on Saturday morning. So thank you so much for joining me for another episode of my midweek sewing chat. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I really enjoy popping on and sharing a bit about what I'm up to. So I hope you're enjoying watching them too. Um, if you are, I'd love it as ever if you would give it this video a thumbs up. And um, I hope you have a lovely Easter, whatever you've got planned. And I hope you managed to carve out a little bit of sewing time. Fingers crossed that we all do, because um, it is such a lovely hobby to have, I think. So thanks again for watching. I'll hopefully see you on Saturday for my March makes video. In the meantime, I hope you have a great week and yes, see you again soon. Bye.